מקובל ש... When a Kabbalist begins to perceive the upper world, he enters a different dimension. The entire world is revealed before him. It's something that doesn't exist in this world. He perceives an entirely different picture, forces that bring our world into action, and souls that are not attached to bodies. Past, present and future stand before him in the present. He experiences all this. He lives fulfilled with the eternal, perfect sensation. He feels that he encompasses the whole of the universe. This deep emotional experience is impossible to express through words. In the books of the Kabbalists, they only advise us on how to attain such an impression, such a sensation, and the discovery of this reality. It's difficult for a Kabbalist to convey to us what he feels, what he faces, what's being revealed before him, what the concealed world is. Of all the means that we have in our world to express an idea or to give a picture and to convey it to people who don't experience spirituality, there's only one medium that somehow expresses the impressions and delight of a man before whom the upper world reveals itself. Sound. This is why Kabbalists, in addition to writing articles and very difficult material, also write songs and melodies. It's one more way to express the sensations of a Kabbalist in a more concise and direct way from heart to heart through sounds without words so that these sounds would enter our heart and change us in some way somehow tuning us into perceiving the upper world there's a soul in each one of us the soul of a Kabbalist resembles a musical instrument that already plays properly and feels properly, similar to King David's violin or harp. This is the inner Kli of a Kabbalist soul, inside which he feels reality in a certain way and can express it through sounds. That's why King David was able to write a book of psalms for us that's fully composed of the impressions of the upper world. We have an enormous gift from the last great Kabbalist of our generation, Rav Yehuda Halevi Ashlag, Bala Salam. By listening to these melodies, we come closer to the true sensation of the upper reality, spirituality. By listening to them, one gradually draws closer and as though they're entering the upper world. However, for every person, regardless of how much he knows and how long he or she has been studying Kabbalah, the sounds are the shortest, most direct, and the simplest means for experiencing something from the spiritual. In the upper world, a Kabbalist feels states that are better or worse, negative and positive forces. He exists between them, governs them while they govern him.
fairly similar to what we feel in this world. A Kabbalist expresses all these states through melodies. This is why there are seemingly sad melodies and there are more joyful ones. But in reality, this is how we hear them. A Kabbalist who listens to this melody and senses the pictures that it awakens feels only excitement. These sounds may seem sorrowful, a melody may be sad, but in reality it's not. It's full of excitement and it sounds sad only to our ear. It sounds to us as if a person who wrote it lacks something. And that's so because in our world we use letters, notes, lacks of fulfillment, kalim, and not the light that fills them. We feel only the kalim and not the lights. Nevertheless, when one listens to this music, he slowly approaches the state in which these kalim are being filled with the light. And he will then feel the same inner experience that a Kabbalist feels. I wish that all of you would become worthy of feeling those vast spaces. The sensations of the entire upper world, the creator, the upper light that fills the soul, our collective kli. Bala Salam thought about us. He wanted us to come closer to this state, which is why he left us his melodies. Let's listen to them and reflect on these melodies as being the means for entering the upper world. means the sons of the king's palace, those desiring to reach the palace of the king. The king's palace is Bina, the property of bestowal, the force of the creator, the spiritual. The sons are those who yearn to resemble the king in their properties, to become like him. As sons, they yearn to understand the king, and through their understanding, to come closer to him and to feel him. For this, they're ready to pass the entire system of corrections, change themselves from beginning to end, from the nature in which they were created to the nature of the king. This is what this song is about. When we reach such a state and become B'nai Echala, it is called the final correction. This is why we sing this song during Mincha, the evening prayer on Shabbat. Shabbat symbolizes the ascents during which this entire world rises to the upper world completely, and then we all enter the palace of the king. Those who undergo their individual correction, who study Kabbalah, feel three ascents on Shabbat. The first ascent in the evening, during the onset of Shabbat, the second the next day, Shabbat morning, and the third, the biggest ascent during Mincha at the end of the day, when Shabbat ends. And then, during this highest state, we sing the song, B'nai Yechala. The lyrics of this song are composed by the Holy Ari, and the melody by Baal Salam. For this reason, Due to the unification of the Ari and Bala Salam in one composition, we entering into this song really reach the highest ascent that a Kabbalist can experience before the general final correction. 
where the entire world rises to that very palace. So this is a very elevated song, like an anthem of ascent. This state, so far, is being attained only by those who study Kabbalah, and later, we expect all of humankind will attain it. Kilatz and Nafshi are words from the Psalms. These are the words that King David used to express his state that he felt as he ascended in his attainment to the state of complete correction of his entire soul. Then he turned to the upper force, the Creator, with these words which mean Thank you for saving my soul. The melody of this song was composed by my teacher, the last great Kabbalist of our generation, Rabbi Baruch Shalom Halevi Ashlag, Rabash. He sang this song to me more than once. Maybe this melody seems sad to us, but in truth, it's not sad, it's tender, and it expresses the feeling of someone who enters the property of Bina bestowal, the properties of the Creator, where there are no cries and everything rests in peace. Rabash expresses the entering into this state through this melody. when he undoubtedly sees that all of his kalim, his entire soul, all of his desires, submit to this upper force and begin to reign in it. This is a short song. It sings about a serene peace, about a man entering the upper force and staying there in the state of absolute rest, the peace of the worlds. Chazal Seder Pesach expresses a state of a person at the beginning of his path. He's full of energy. He's ready for his journey. And he knows that the process of correction lies in front of him until he corrects himself to receive the light of the Torah. But in Exodus from Egypt, rising above his nature, he already sees a full guarantee that with the help from above, he has the power and he is able to do it and that all of this is prepared for him. Past these 49 gates, corrections, 
the so-called Lag Bomer, the 33rd day of Omer. In the middle and all the days of Omer, in order to come to the reception of the Torah. Tzadik Ketamar Efrach. Tzadik Ketamar Efrach. Basically, there are two states in every song. One is the state of the Kli, the soul on which the man has worked, corrected, and then attained delight and excitement, and he now sings from this delight. This is why in Siddiq Katamar Frak, there's a sensation of the previous state when one lacked fulfillment, suffered and searched and that he reached the state in which he knows that this is how it was supposed to be. Because a righteous man eventually comes to justify the entire process through which he has passed. Thus the rapture that comes from before being in the outermost oppositeness of sensing himself very distant from the Creator And now he enters the palace of the king and the upper world, it bursts out of him in his present state in the form of a melody. And the melody comes from within the sensation that fills him. This sensation encompasses two opposite states. In his previous, most distant state, that seems hopelessly far from the upper, and in the present state, when he has reached adhesion with him. In essence, this song is special because one's grateful, but not for his sake. Rather, one is grateful for being able to be righteous, meaning for being able to justify the Creator in all that happened to him on his path. He sees now the causality and inevitability of all the states that he passed. He understands that all of them were arranged for him from above so that he could attain this elevated state. Lagid Baboker Hasdecha expresses states that we experience. In our world, when we fall asleep, we in essence lose awareness, disconnect from the world and from life. We enter a state where we're detached from life and we're left only with so-called Kista de Chayuta a level of minimal life. When in essence we're not sure whether we will rise after sleep or not. So why do we rise? All of a sudden we receive some awakening from within and then we wake up and again continue our life on a new day. But this state in which we disconnect from reality and enter into dreams is very special. It's similar to states that exist in the spiritual as well, and this is because everything that exists in the corporal is the result of the spiritual.
And this is why in the spiritual there are also states called day, evening and morning. Only that in the spiritual all of them happen because man himself creates day, night and all of the times. He puts himself through these states by himself. If he doesn't take himself through these states, if he doesn't push himself, does not advance, then time does not pass. For there's no time in the spiritual, there are only actions, cause and effect. So until one goes to sleep in the spiritual sense, meaning disconnects from the spiritual reality and puts himself into drowsiness, a disconnection from the spiritual, the creator, the upper forces. One performs special corrections whereby he prepares the desire to rise inside of himself. If one prepares himself correctly, the upper light comes against these desires and wakens him, just as the sun awakens us in the morning. However, without the light that comes from above, one will not be able to wake up. In essence, this is why after one rose in the morning, meaning awakened again for the spiritual, this is called rise in the spiritual, he praises the upper force, the Creator who awakened him and gave him the awakening for reaching the goal of creation, corrections, sublime, eternal, perfect states. And then one sings, proclaim your mercy in the morning, because this is really mercy from the higher that awakens him. Waltz is a very special melody. It's truly classical, with all the characteristics of a waltz corresponding to our traditions. This melody does not belong to Bala Salam, though it did come to us through him. He heard it from his Rav, Admor from Persov, who educated him. Bala Salam lived in Warsaw, just like his parents, There was a small village close to Warsaw, Persov. And in this village lived Rabbi from Persov. He was a Kabbalist and when Bala Salam was growing up, he used to go to visit him together with his father. Bala Salam's father also studied with the Rabbi from Persov. And gradually, as Bala Salam grew up, Rabbi from Persov started to draw him closer to himself. Through him, Bala Salam attained the revelation of the Creator, the spiritual, and became a Kabbalist. After a certain period of time, Bala Salam started to discover that he surpassed his teacher. Bala Salam then left and went to the land of Israel. This melody came from Rabbi from Persov, passed on to Bala Salam, from him to my Rav, and I heard it from him. Kel Mistatera is a song that we sing towards the end of Shabbat, at the end of the day, when we're already approaching the coming out, the end of Shabbat. The end of Shabbat is the time when the Divine Shekhinah, Sanctity, that comes to man during the spiritual ascent starts purposefully abandoning him leaving him in darkness, in the lack of fulfillment, so that all that he received on the Shabbat serves as the driving energy for an independent attainment of what he received as a gift on Shabbat. 
Shabbat is called a gift. A gift is something that's not given to man as a reward, for he has not labored for it. And so is Shabbat. From above comes the upper force called Shabbat. He experiences various sensations, phenomena that he goes through, but he does not yet deserve it according to his Kaleem. They're given to him as a gift. A person is granted his ascent, his revelation, but after some time this sensation begins to wane and to end. Then a person says, Kel Mestater, the Creator is hiding. You, Creator, have revealed yourself to me in a state of Shabbat as a gift. And now you go away from me again, back into hiding. I understand that this is necessary so that I can come closer and reveal you even on low days, meaning at the time of your concealment, on weekdays, when I'm in a state of weekdays separated from sanctity. But I must ensure that all days of the week connect to the degree of Shabbat. This song expresses the sensation of all ten sefirot, Keter, Chachma, Bina, Chesed, Gevura, Teferet, Netzachod, Yesod, and Malchut, and this is because one perceived the properties of the Creator in them, and now, as he goes into concealment, and the Creator distances himself, he knows exactly what he needs to attain by himself. This is already inscribed in him as Reshemot, and he acquired the strength for this from being given the gift in Shabbat, and now during the week, a person raises himself to the level of the previous Shabbat, and later, when the following Shabbat comes, for him it will be an even greater gift. This continues until all these Shabbats unite into the level of final correction. The most important thing in Kabbalistic music is not the notes themselves, but all these fine nuances that exist between them. We learn that there are tanim, flavors, nikudot, dots under the letters, tagin, crowns on top of the letters, and otiot, the letters. What are letters? Letters are exactly the finest nuances formed at the end of the Kli's entire impression from the light. These are called letters, impressions of Reshemot leaving the Kli and entering it again as the light was leaving the Kli. This short impression inside and outside in the departing light is called a letter, meaning a symbol the largest informative part. It's the same with sounds. When we play these sounds, these melodies, there's a big difference between one who knows and one who's ignorant, between one who plays correctly and the one who plays nicely. And it lies in how much one understands where the important things are. What's most important does not lie in the sounds, but in the tiniest symbols, and how the sound begins and ends, not the sound itself. Regrettably, not everybody is ready to express this. I had a wonderful student. He was very close to me. His name was Vitali. He played violin. So he said to me, I'm ready to play only on the condition that you hold my hand.
singing evokes blessings from above until it becomes manifested in all lower worlds. Rabbi Eliezer said, those who aspire shall sing praises unto the spiritual heights, unto the upper ones and the lower ones, fastening all the worlds with the tie of faith. It is said about this deed, those who aspire to the Creator will sing this song, will sing in particular and not sings, since it will happen in the future. For singing should resound in Malchut, singing praises to its height Zeranpin, and by this Malchut itself rises to Zeranpin. This is what the book of Zohar narrates to us about that time. To the leader upon lilies. A lily is Malchut that contains all the levels, all the desires, all of man's life. A lily among thorns means reaching all these desires and using them in his nature to be like God. A man must reach this state through the thorns, through many discernments, interruptions and clarifications and therefore he is called a victor. What is a victor to the sons of Korach? A victor reaches and learns the song of love. It is only from within Malchut, from the most inner point in the heart, that one begins to feel the Creator, a feeling of unification and true love. This comes at the end of the way, but until then, there is the revelation of hatred and fear, confusion and lack of confidence, dependence and every possible complaint, everything that one can imagine. With all this, one turns to the Creator and blames Him for everything. Until it opens up to Him and He can see the whole picture and praise Him, connect with Him, cling to Him, love Him. What does He say to the Creator? My heart has acquired a good thing. There's only one good thing in the world. Adhesion with the Creator, with bestowal, with love. Man is initially built in an opposite form from him, as an egoist, who only thinks about himself and who only wishes to take advantage of the whole world and of the godly force and use it for his own needs. In the process of his work, through his advancement, in his desire to find out, he later discovers to what extent he is opposite in form. When all the forces of evil, the Klippot, are revealed in him, and he's able to conquer them, is what is called goodness. My heart has acquired a good thing. In what sense? I say my deeds are for the king. Everything that is inside of me is now directed to the king. He's not praising himself but the creator because he discovers that by acquiring his attributes and understanding them, he himself ascends to the same levels. You are more beautiful than any man. He becomes a hero. And all of creation is below him. 
he takes hold of it in order to work in the same form of bestowal as the Creator. This is a song that can be sung only by a person who has indeed reached the end of the way. My teacher, Rabash, He used to sing it alone sometimes in Tiberius. I used to hear him from the next room on long winter nights. He would be in a special state, and from this I saw how deeply absorbed inside of himself he was, how detached from this reality, and how attached to this flowing song, to the forces, to the levels, to the states that this song talks about, a song of friendship, of union with the Creator. Singing is the secret of attracting the light of greatness and wisdom, coming from its root in the spiritual height over the left female line, the line called night. This is why those who sing at night sing for all in whom this song resounds. As it is said about the greatest poet of all time, King David, the author of Psalms who used to write at night, and he rose while it was still night. The revelation of the light of wisdom in man is his spiritual ascent, and such an ascent is possible only from darkness. It is performed only at night. Kivuli, draw close to me. Draw close to me is a call that comes from the Creator to a person that awakens him to draw closer. This awakening comes to a man in many fashions. At times, it's revealed directly when a person feels an awakening. Another time, it's felt in an opposite manner, as a feeling of repulsion from the goal. One time, it's a good, beautiful feeling, like a bright, happy morning. And another time, he feels quite opposite. It feels like some kind of a fall a descent, some unclear state, a state that can even be critical. This is also an awakening. As long as a person feels that he's in some kind of motion,
even if he feels it, it's not part of God, of godliness, of spirituality. He still feels some kind of a relationship. As it's written in the Torah, that Pharaoh is the one who brought the people of Israel closer to their Father in Heaven. There are cases where the evil force brings one to advance more than the good force. The Creator always desires man to draw closer to Him, awakens a person according to what he's prepared for. Thus, a man must always hear the Creator saying, draw close to me, at any given moment, no matter what situation he's in. As was stated, those who sing praises at night raise by their singing all whose souls sing that song. When the lower one begins life by song, the upper ones help the lower ones with power, so that the lower ones realize and attain what the mortals are not able to attain. The heavens and the earth, Zeranpin and Nukva, rise by this power thanks to this singing. have compassion on your creation. A person asks for forgiveness and pardon. As usual in the spiritual work, there are two opposite conditions. For those who are at the level of an angel, At the final stage of the tikkun, there is but one force. There is none else besides him. For those who are at a state of unconsciousness, at the level of this world, there is also only one force. If I am not for myself, then who will be? To those who are on the way from this world to the world of Ein Sof, both these forces are revealed at any given time, the force of the Creator and of the creature that work together. On one hand, it's the Creator who apparently arranges everything. But on the other hand, it depends on the creature. When a person reaches the state where, if I am not for myself, and there's none else besides him converge and become one in him, then he has a real prayer. which is composed of two opposing discernments. And he feels that he cannot decide. How can it be that the Creator controls everything in man, that on one hand there's none else besides him, and yet on the other hand A man still has the feeling that he exists outside the Creator's control and can turn to Him and can consolidate his attitude towards adhesion.
This can be compared to a state where a man finds himself at the age of 40 or 50, when he already knows about life, everything that there is to know, and yet at the same time he feels like a fetus in his mother's womb that doesn't understand and doesn't know and cannot discern anything. Then he has only one request. After all of his efforts, after all of the labor that he's put into it. Test me and see if I'm on the right path. Singing is the song, the call of the soul, that contains the entire Torah, the entire upper light, the song to which the upper and the lower ones in all the worlds awaken, the song like a spring from above, a repose of the upper one, the divine mercy, the song that adorns the holy supernal name Malchut, the receptacle of the Creator. And this is why it is the Holy of Holies. Yale Tachnunenu, raise our pleas. Please means the prayer of the many. Many means when a person discovers that he's still composed of different forces that are not in a state of adhesion with the Creator. When he judges them, feels them, and clarifies them one by one, he reaches a state where he raises man, a request, please that the upper force will come and correct these different opposing forces inside of him and give them one desire and intention. He pleads that he will feel one flow and one desire in them, although they are so different and so opposite, so that they will lead him to his source. In states of either morning or night, in states when the upper force shines on him and when it does not, he pleads that his prayer shall be whole until it's answered and all the requests and desires are united in him and all his vessels become one great vessel in which he can reach adhesion with his Creator. This is what we sing on Yom Kippur in a state when the empty vessels are revealed. From these pleas, as we raise requests for correction, from above, we receive the light that reforms. And when the vessel is corrected, it reaches a state where it's filled with all the light of love and adhesion.
When the lower ones begin their life by song, their spiritual ascent to the soul's root, the upper ones add power to them in order for the lower ones to attain the upper light of wisdom that has reached and become revealed in Zon of the world of Azilut and in the angels preceding it. This way, the lower ones increase the powers and luminescence of the wisdom in the upper realms. Isidere la Sudata, I shall arrange for the meal. I shall arrange for the meal is not a tune, it's a song of a person whose point in the heart has awakened. And after a very long way of preparing for the work of godliness, reaches a state where he transcends the Mahsam and enters the spiritual world. There he passes through all the levels of the worlds of Biya to Atzilut and acquires the vessels of bestowal and reaches Gadlut. Rising to Rosh to Atzilut, where his soul is ready and welcome to receive the light of Ein Sof and to receive in order to bestow. Now it's filled with the light which is called the meal of the righteous. Now he feels all the preparations he's been through and all the components of this work at this high state. And he praises all of the forces that he felt and through which he has risen to this high level. And he invites them to a meal. Meaning that they all take part in it now and he feels all the components in him as he conducts the big zivug for adhesion to the Creator, whereby he and the Creator unite in his internal vessels. He invites the upper levels, who used to take care of him when he was little, while he was on the way, Zeranpin and Malchut de Atzilut, who gave birth to the soul and who used to control him and help him grow, who have led him from one state to another, from darkness into light, so that he will acquire all the discernments and grow wiser until he's grown and become big. He's grown above the desire to receive and is now able to control it and to work with it in order to bestow. Now that he's in a state of the greatest, highest union with the Creator, he sings this song, I shall prepare for the meal. Now for this high meal of Shabbat, a sort of next world, a sort of Gemar Tikkun, end of correction. He uses all the means, all the elements, all the forces, both internal and external. He, along with his entire soul and all the worlds that have brought him, to this situation. Now the time of unification with the Creator has arrived. In one union, in one vessel, in the meal of the righteous.
Apotheosis of singing is the song of songs that contains the entire Torah, the entire upper light, the entire darkness, the entire light, the entire path of all the souls up until the complete spiritual redemption and resurrection of the dead, up to that day which is the Creator Shabbat. Whatever is, whatever was, and whatever will be on the seventh day when the Creator Shabbat comes. Everything is included in the Song of Songs. Nagun, melody. A melody is the expression of emotions without words. On one hand, it's more abstract, and on the other hand, it's sharper and more focused. If in a song the words and the melody operate together, as there are words, meaning letters, which make up sentences in a plea, in a certain process that begins and ends, while the melody itself, which is added to the words, expresses the tamim, the flavors in the plea. Then in a tune without words, a person must also express the missing words by the melody itself. We know that there are discernments in the vessels of tamim, nekudot, tagin, and letters in the tune itself. In writing, we also see Nikudot and letters. But Tamim and Tagim are only used in special circumstances. They are internal additions which express the internal conditions of the vessel, of one's feelings, of how one constructs his attitude. There's a melody that goes over the words and in many cases changes the essence of the words. In many cases, I can sing the same words happily, or I can sing them sadly, and each time the same words will have a totally different meaning. This means that the tune expresses my attitude to what the words say. Therefore, there are tamim, Nikudot, Tagin, and letters of which the Tamim expresses the person's attitude to what he's singing to a much greater degree. <laughs> 